Hello everyone. I'm really happy to be making this video because it's about something that I've been looking at for a couple of months now and slowly trying to get decent at it. Um, what I want to do in this video is to create a really beginner's entry level how to get started with. And what we're looking at is a new visualization called Deneb. What Deneb allows you to do is to use Vega and Vega Lite to create your visualizations. Now, if you've never heard of these things, no worries. That's why we're here. This is a really basic video on how to get started. Um, if you already know these things, then maybe you don't need this video. Um, either way, like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, it's I, I like this thing a lot. I like Deneb a lot. It's really for me a bit of a game changer when it comes to creating visualizations because um, it's very flexible and you can create something decent pretty easily. Now, I will say that if you want a bit of inspiration of what you can truly do with this, you need to look at someone called Kerry Colosco. Kerry has been using this for some time and she is very, very good at it. Um, I'll link her blog in this video um, it's just so you can take a look at what's going on there and maybe give you some inspiration to actually use it to see what you can do once you put in effort and really learn on how to use this tool. If you never get to that level of advanced, no stress because I don't think I ever will, but I'm still going to use it anyway because I think even on quite a basic level, you can create some stuff that you can't create in Power BI without it. So whichever way, it's a good thing to use. So let's get started and see how you use it and what you can create and how you do those things. So how do you get it? Very easily. This is Power BI, standard thing. We're going to go and we're going to look at get more visuals. Once you're there, of course, you can just search for Deneb and you're going to find it right away. What I want to say is that you should not only click on add, but in this click case, also use the download sample. The download sample will give you links to the documentation, which we're also going to look at in this video. And what it's also going to do is actually show you some examples of the use of Dena within Power BI and also include examples from Kerry Colosco, who I just mentioned before. So download that file. It's going to come in pretty handy for you. So I'm going to close that up now. So we have the visualization in Power BI. Now all we have to do is click on that, which is Deneb, and this appears. It gives you some information on how to get started, but basically it's this. You can add some fields, and then you click on the Edit button. So I want to add my fields, so I want to click on my points running. I want to use um, rounds round, I should say. And I want to use my total points by game week. Oh, I've added my fields. And now I can just click on edit. If you want to add more fields at any point, you can do that very easily by doing what you usually do, just add fields. But I put them on before I get started because it just makes sense to me. So Vega light and Vega, what's the difference? Vega light is um, not as advanced as Vega. You can do more with Vega. Um, but for me, Vega Lite is plenty. I've, I'm very happy with what I've done so far, again, at a pretty basic level. Um, so we're going to look at Vega Lite today. You can either um, go with empty or you can select a certain type of visualization. We're going to go with empty because I want to show you how you can create something nice just by having uh, looking at the documentation and taking stuff from there. So we're going to go with empty and we're going to click on create. When you do that, this is where we are. We have our visual editor and when we create something, it's going to appear here. Currently, we have an error because we don't have anything. So let's get something and to do that we are going to go to the documentation, which I know no one likes to do, but this is the documentation. It's really good, really helpful. 
So I'll link this also in the video. So you can just click on it and go straight away. We want to look at the examples actually before we go to the documentation because you can just scroll down and see what's possible. So pretty standard bar charts, of course. Um, and then you scroll, it gets maybe a bit more complex. And then we have some line charts. Um, so you can see we've got a lot going on. Pie charts. Yeah. Circular plot. It's a pie chart. Um, so yeah, but we're not going to get into every single visualization. Of course, we're just going to go and we're going to have a look today at the humble line chart. But don't worry, we're not going to create just a line chart. It's going to get a bit more interesting pretty quickly. So if you saw before in our visualization that we created, we had this data and then mark. So okay. So if we go to our visual, um, go to our documentation and see and compare what we what we have and what is currently what they have, if you will. So you can see really quickly there are the similarities, right? Because we have mark line. So we're looking at a line chart and it says mark line. There's a giveaway here, right? And then we have X and Y. So clearly axis stuff. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste everything from here and I'm going to steal it and I'm going to put it in our visual. So replace that, see what happens. So nothing will happen at first because what you need to do is either click on this to apply the changes or click on this, which will auto apply all the changes you type. So I'm going to activate that because I prefer it. It's a bit faster, whatever. So a change has happened. We no longer have that error. We have a visualization, albeit blank, but it's there. So something's happened. That's great. Um, but X and Y, this is referring to a field. So X field is date and Y field is price, but we don't have those fields. So let's just replace them with what we do have. So we don't have date, but I want my X axis to be round. So I start to type and all of a sudden I get this order completed this, let's call it Vega IntelliSense. And it is, or Deneb IntelliSense maybe is a bit more fair. Um, it works really well. So if you have to just type O N like that, if I type the end, it, it just, it's very good at detecting what you want based on what exists. And um, so I hit return and it appears. So there is a small change here already and we don't want um, price. We want um, the running total point running hit that. And there we have something nice. So looking pretty small there. You can either zoom in and out like this, or you can click this thing here. And that is going to make it fit the available space. Great. We've created a line chart. See, that's how easy it was. Just a few things, line chart, wonderful. Um, but there's something going on here with the round. What's that all about? Well, if you look at the type, see field, round, type, temporal. So far, pretty self-explanatory stuff. But our field is not temporal. What it is, is actually, it's it's a, it's a value. It's a, a round is a number. So I want to go with quantitative and see what happens. And fantastic. It's showing me now my rounds and it's grouped them in values of five, which is pretty standard. Um, but what if I didn't want to show it that way? What if I just wanted to show each value on its own? To do that, all I'd have to do actually is remove everything here. So where it says, when I'm specifying the type, let us get rid of that. And then you'll see, I have now every single value that I have currently on my round, which is on my x axis. So now we have created a visual showing the values that we want and the and the and the, the, the x axis how we want it. It's not perfect. I recognize that there are some changes that need to be made, but we'll get to that. Um, but this is a line chart, I want to quickly put this back to um, quantitative it looks slightly better at this point anyway. Um, let's try and create something a bit more interesting than just a line chart. Because as I said, we're not here to create a line chart, we can do that pretty easily without Deneb, right? 
So let's go back to where we were before and check out the documentation. Because we saw that when we use the word line, it's a line chart. So surely if we just change that to something else, we can create a different sort of visualization. And that says here mark. So let's check out the documentation and see what it says. So now I'm going to click on documentation. And here straight away you see it says mark. I said, okay, mark, I've got arc, I've got all these different possibilities. So essentially we can just pick one of those and see what happens, right? So let's do that. Um, let's just type in a couple of examples and then see how see how it looks. So if I were to change mark from line to say something like, I don't know, um, let's do something like circle. So circle level four. Now we have our circles. Um, it was pretty cool. I saw square as well. So I guess it's pretty much the same sort of thing. Indeed. So that's how our squares look. What I want to show actually is something called trail because I think trail is very, very cool. So I type in trail and yeah, it's just a line chart. So what's going on? Let's look at the documentation. We go back to the documentation and if we just click on where it says trail, it's going to provide us with more information. Yeah. We just scroll down a little bit and you can see it's given us this example. And within the example, we have also, well, what created this. And this is what created this. This is the, the Vega light, which has created this visual. And you can see what we're missing is this field here. Because we have, we, we know we have mark, we know we have X and Y. And we're looking at the thickness of the line itself, which as you can see here, gets thicker as the value gets higher. So let's just steal this line here, this size, and then see how it looks if we then utilize that in our visual. So I'm going to put in a comma, stick in that, get rid of that comma. So what's happened? Let's just quickly do an undo, uh, copy that, cut it out. So this is what we had. We had this line, that thickness, nothing else. We put that in. So we have this price has appeared there. Why is that? And we have a thin line. Well, it says price, it says, and it says here size field price. We know we don't have this field. We've discussed that already. And I'm going to replace that with um, total points by game week. Uh -huh. That's done something. That has now determined that the thickness of our line or trail, if you will, is um, determined by the total points by game week, which is what we wanted. And this legend here is showing that, you know, at a certain thickness, this is what it means. And this is what this is. So yeah, it's just doing what a legend does. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at that outside of the visual editor to see how it looks. I'm going to go to a report. And I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit, which can be a bit non-responsive sometimes with Power BI and, and custom visualizations, but this one's working nicely. Very cool. And what we got. So that's how it looks. It's looking pretty cool. I like it. So one of the reasons I like trails so much is because certainly when we're using something like accumulative value, you can see, of course, the spikes when there's a particularly high value. But it's much easier to see those when they have a thicker line. I mean, you can see straight away now that by having this trail with the thickness at a certain level for the total points by game week, when there's many points scored in a specific week, it's a nice thick line and your eye just goes to that. You can identify that. Now, this is great because it looks cool and there's nothing wrong with making your reports look cool, um, but also adds value. Yeah, so you, it's looking cool and it's adding value, win-win. Fantastic. You might want to remove the legend. It's up to you. Um, as you can see, we have pretty much the same thing here, um, but it's looking different. Why does it look different? Well, 
if we go into this visualization rather than this one now, we'll identify a few things that we've done differently, um, which gives us this view. So most obviously, you can see that it doesn't have a legend. And here at the bottom, you can see it says legend null, which is great because all we got to do is type legend null, and then it's going to disappear. And we have other bits and pieces around here. Okay, so let's before we do that, let's just do our legend null so you can show how see how that works. It's nice and easy. I'm going to go back to this visual. And I'm going to add that. Hopefully, I won't make a mistake. It has been known to happen. Um, but no, that worked, I think. Yes, it did. Cool. So we added legend null. And it's gone. So we're adding stuff now so you can kind of perhaps see that maybe it starts to get a bit, a bit more complex. Um, but again, what we have, we have a mark, we have our x and y axes, we have something that determines the size of the line and we have legend null. So still only five things. And I think this is now a good visualization. I would use that in a report. No worries. I think there's nothing wrong with using that visualization in the report. There are still some things we can change. Um, and we'll look at those now. But I like it. Looks cool. So this these are really just a few the, the first steps, right? I said it's a basic how to make your first visualizations. And already, we've done that. So I'm going to go back to this one. And have a look. So there are certain things that you'll see in this um, visual editor that we haven't looked at yet. So we have stroke width, we have interpolate, um, stroke and stroke and fill, and tooltip true. So we'll go into those things um, because they're important. They may necessarily, they may not necessarily actually all be relevant to this visualization. So before I show you that they, before I show you what they are, one of the reasons I keep things in that I don't need is because, because I'm learning, because I'm pretty using this to quite a basic level is that I can easily forget that they exist. So an example, tool trip, tool tip is set to true. It's difficult to say. So when I hover over, you can see the tooltip. If I were to set it to false, obviously, I now can't see my tooltip. Um, so you could question why I leave it in there at all, because if it's set to false, and I can't see it, why just not specify it? Well, for me, it's simply because it kind of it helps me remember that it exists. Because if I had nothing to tooltip, because I didn't want it there, when I wanted to add the tooltip back in, I might struggle to remember, okay, where did I type that? And how did I type it? And that kind of stuff. So by having it in, whether it's true or false is helpful. The same is true of here of interpolate. Actually, interpolate doesn't help with this type of visualization at all. It helps with a uh, line and it helps the area. We'll look at that in a second. But here, I don't want to take it out because it's, it's not, it's not giving me an error. And it allows me to remember that when I do need to use it, it's just there. I've created essentially like a little template for myself. So let's look at these things now. Stroke width, for example. Now, a stroke width or the stroke itself is basically the border, right? So if I change the stroke width from one to 0 0.5, you can see that the, the, the border got a little bit smaller. I mean, it's not a big border anyway. And maybe it's better to show that on a different sort of visualization. So if we change that, instead of showing a trail, let's do something like a bar maybe there. So a couple of things here. Stroke width, is three now. So now you can see that the stroke with what that shows and the stroke color is black. And my fill in my visual is this purple color. Um, 
One thing also I want to point out that what I really like about this is that before we said that we wanted to specify the width of the trail by here total points by game week, I love the fact that on a bar it does the same thing. Now you might not like how it looks, I personally think it looks really cool, um, but to have a bar chart where the width of the bar is determined by a value that I choose is very cool. I will be using this for sure. Um, love it. So yeah, I now I'm on my uh, my bar chart. I have a stroke width of three. I can specify the 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 color, and my tooltip is still false. If I move that now to true, we should have a tooltip as well. So if I hover over, it'll give me a value. Um, the interpolate. That really is not in this visualization also not helpful. But if I go to something like an area, you can see that it's set to step and I have this step. So what are the other options? Well, I know if I type basis, it's gonna give me that, but that's all I know, that's all I can remember. So we now we spring back to our documentation and see what's going on. So if we now look at mark, and I think I said area, you can see that you have, we have basis, that's what I just selected. And before we had step. And that we also have different options, right? We can say linear, um, natural. You're probably not gonna use all of these, right? You're probably gonna use maybe like a maximum of three, unless you have a specific need to use something based on the type of data that you have. What is important to know is that the information that you require is again in this fantastic documentation for Vega Lite. So what we had, we had area and we had step. You also have step after and step before, um, but let's just stick with that step. Go back now to our Power BI file. So here, step. And again, we have the stroke and we can set the stroke width and the stroke size, all the type of stuff. So we can see now what's going on in the visualization. We can change the mark to create some really cool stuff and really interesting, do some stuff with that data that's not really possible without Denim. Let's just quickly look at something else that isn't in the specification, but is actually in the config. Because if you remember, we were looking at what was different in this visualization to this visualization. Obviously it's quite a lot different now because we've changed the type. Um, but regarding the grid, for example, um, why is that looking different? Let's have a look. So in here we have this config section and in the config section, you can set a lot of stuff up. So I'll be very honest. I copy and pasted this, I believe a while ago from um, Kerry. And I didn't understand it when I first did it. I had to go through and change each individual thing and see what was going on. Um, so actually when you first create a visualization, this is how it looks. So in this one, this is the one that we created just in this video and the config says that. Auto size, type fit, contains padding. So this is what you, this is what you start off with. What we have in this one is obviously a lot more, which is why we have a different look and visualization. If you look here, it says grid false. So if we change it to true, how's that gonna look? Now we have our grid as we do in the other visualization. Why though do we have a Y axis that looks different? Well, what I've done here is this tick count. So tick count, it took me a while to work this one out, because um, I didn't understand what tick meant. I'd never account encountered this before, so now I know, so it's easier, which is why I'm telling you as well. Um, the tick count, if I take this out, is gonna give us this standard values. You can specify the number of ticks that you want to see, but not precisely, like roughly based on the values that are currently in the visualization. So I've got five and it's, it's currently showing four. 
Um, so whatever you type there, it gives you the best based on what you've typed. So if I type six, it's gonna give me like that, whatever. Zero, of course, you have none. So you look at this to change the different, how your Y axis looks. So regarding the grid and, and all these values, you have to look at certain things and how things interact with each other. So the grid is a great example because currently I have my ticks set to zero, okay? And I have my grid here set to true, which means I have grid. If I type in false, I'm gonna get no grid. However, if I remove that completely, I also get no grid. Why? Because my tick count is set to zero. If I change the ticks back to five, the, the, the grid by default is gonna show me the, the, the grid on the Y axis. So as I say, you have to look at how these things interact with one another. And this is about kind of playing around and reading the documentation and understanding how these things work. I think it's a lot of fun to do this. And I understand that it slowly gets more complex. And it's frustrating for me sometimes as well when I can't create something um, that I could create with a few clicks in Power BI. But in general, you can also do a lot more with just a few lines of basic stuff than you, without that you wouldn't be able to create those things at all in Power BI. So there are some things that are a bit frustrating as you're learning, but the payoff is there. And it's, for me, it's pretty immediate. So this is why we have this visual that looks different because I have this config which has other bits of information. Also, for example, a label angle a zero. If we would just so it label angle and do say 90, it pivots the labels if you want that. Set it to zero. If from here we quickly go to settings, quite an important one is this cross filtering. If you don't have cross filtering switched on, you can't cross filter in your visualization. So this needs to be switched on. I believe it isn't by default. So come here and click on cross filtering and switch it on if you want to enable that in your Deneb visualization. As you type in, as you uh, create more and more lines of code, it has this really helpful button right here and is the repair and format. You click on that and it just really tidies it up for you because I was typing, to be honest, and as I was typing more and more stuff, and I was thinking, yeah, actually this is cool, I'm keeping it nice and, and, and tidy, and I can understand it. Um, but actually when I tried this, I realized actually I was doing a pretty bad job. And um, this, and this formatted it to make it look very nice, much easier to read. So certainly use that as you start to type more and more. So let's go back to a report and see what we have. Um, I have a couple of other, visualizations that I use in Deneb. I'm just gonna delete this one because we're not looking at it anymore. Um, this one, for example, if I just take off this slicer here. So this doesn't look great. I understand that it looks a bit um, experimental, which is exactly what it is. Everything I'm creating with Deneb is still very experimental. Um, click on edit here, and you can see the bits and pieces going on. What I've done here in on my y axis is I don't have um like a, a value but rather my category. So this is still obviously you stuff that you can do. You'll see here also I have these errors. Um that's because stuff isn't formatted correctly. And you'll see I have like 15 schema validations. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh my God, 15, that's so many. I've made so many terrible mistakes. What have I done? Um the errors are there, but it still works. And I realized just recently that sometimes it can be as simple as something as um, using, well, I'll show you actually. For example, here, if I have stroke width of three, if I change this to three like that, my stroke width is still correct, okay? As you can see, the, the, nothing changed in the visual. It's exactly how it was before. So stroke width is three, but I've typed it incorrectly, kind of like a text rather than a number. And that now shows me 
26 schema validation errors. 26. Just because of that. So if you start to type and you start to get these errors, certainly pay attention to them, but don't stress too much because they can be really easy to fix. And as I say, 26 errors based just on that is a lot, right? Um, just something to look out for, which I noticed myself. So this is basically what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to show you. This is the, my really entry level video into Deneb and how to use a little bit of Vega light. Again, the documentation for this is very strong. You should definitely use it. Um, I should read it more than I do. I should probably sit down and actually read it bit by bit, but I much rather learn by actually doing stuff. Um, so that can be a good thing and a bad thing. The other file that I mentioned before, is something that you should look at as well. This is the file that you download when you actually get the visualization itself in Power BI. So maybe we can have a quick look at that right now. So this is the file that we downloaded. Um, this gives you links to the, the documentation. You can click on each tab and it'll show you different things with more text of what you can create. Um, the one I want to kind of focus on is this Vega Light examples you can see on the website as well. But yeah, what I want to focus on was this page here because this is the page with value with visualizations created by Kerry. I really like these because they're really tidy. Essentially for me, they look like cards. I think they've been designed that way. Um, but I mean that as a compliment for sure, because they're cards that contain lots of information. Um, you know, you have your a value, like a target, um, you have your line with like a trend and it looks, lo it just looks very nice. I love how it's done. I could go into those and show you some of the, um, of the code, but I will. The mistake I made was looking at this and thinking, Okay, so how do I replicate that? I couldn't, I, I probably wasted a few days by doing that because it makes no sense for me to start from here because you're looking at the work of someone who isn't getting started. You're looking at the work of someone who can do really, really nice stuff with Deneb and with Vega, Vega Lite. So this is to show you some nice visualizations, something to, to work towards. Hopefully one day I might get close to this. That would be wonderful. If not, I'm still happy with what I can create in Power BI with my basic knowledge. Even if you wanna create pretty standard visualizations, but with an added something, you should use Deneb because you can do it with great ease. I have a page also on this report and I have this visualization, which I really like, which I otherwise wouldn't be able to create. And so this is, and this, these are both Deneb. And this, what this allows me to do is to show the top five performers per game week, and then the difference in points between those. So you can see here, for example, the top performer had 24 points and the next person down had 18. That for me was great to be able to make that. And it was easier to do with Deneb, with Vega Light than it would have been in Power BI. So that's what I wanted to show you. My recommendation would be to basically, if you've never used these tools before, my recommendation first of all would be to absolutely install Deneb and to utilize this fantastic new visualization that you have in Power BI. I would urge you to read the documentation and actually do what we did in this video. Take little bits and pieces of it from a really basic level, create some stuff and see what can be done and inspire, to inspire yourself to use it and, and do more. I really hope this video helped. Um, I'm very enthusiastic about this subject because as I mentioned during this video, it makes some cool stuff, but not just cool, 
helpful, actually allow you different ways of showing your data and adding value. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. Um, as ever, if you want to see more videos like this about Power BI, but of a range of different subjects with Power BI, subscribe. There'll be more videos coming. And um, thank you very much. I really hope you enjoy Deneb. Take care and goodbye.